Hey guys, it's Jackman5000 here, and today I'm going to be doing a little StarCraft 2 commentary here for you guys. And so this is just going to be on like 7 racks or 7 barracks. Uh, so this is going to be my build for today. And I'm actually just going to go and speed this up at faster just for a quick second here, because the first like base start of the game, not really too much going on obviously, just building your probes up. So you need to remember at first in the game, the first thing you want to do, you start off with your 50 minerals. Uh, in the corner here, that's where you always start off, and your SCVs are just sitting here. So you want to obviously get them starting to work right away, and just build one as soon as, like, just right away. Obviously, because you have 50 minerals, just enough to build an SCV. That's just the basic build right there. You got to go and build another one. And so you get one out. You want to build your supply depot up first, obviously. So then, number one, you can get more SCVs, and also you cannot, uh, I believe they patched it, like, many months ago, uh, so that you need a supply depot before you can get a barracks out. You used to be able to get a barracks before you built a supply depot, but they patched that a few months after the game came out. I, ac I actually have had this game for quite a while. I just never really played it that much. And so you need to obviously remember to get your stuff going so I got my hotkeys going here so I got a hotkey on this guy it's gonna be like my builder probe and I got a hotkey on my command center so you can easily just transition between these if you ever need to uh, it's always a good idea to have a builder probe hotkeyed and a command center hotkeyed obviously this is not necessary for any of this build but um, it, it's a good thing to have it's good strategy to use even for any build that you want to go as uh, for even any race you always want to be hotkeying your uh, command center your nexus or you want to call it whatever it usually is in one of your workers so obviously since I'm watching a replay, I have a view over all this, we can just kind of see what he's up to. So we can see that he's building a spawning pool. And I'm actually just sending a guy to scout out just to see uh, real quick what he's actually building so I know what to go for. And I didn't even notice this guy scouting here. I actually did not notice him come through at all. Uh, and then he got his overlord scout. And so later on he does build a Nidus Worm right here. I noticed it just too late. Uh, I noticed it over here and then... Uh, I was over here somewhere, so my guys were like halfway there, and then he just started spawning shit everywhere. So I was a bit late on spawning that Nidus Worm. Really kind of, it kind of fucked up my eco, but I managed to hold it off. And so then I pretty much just came back end game, just raped the shit out of him. So yeah, you can see he's getting a spawning pool up, so he's probably going to be making some zerglings, as you can see right here. And we'll see what my build is doing right here. So I'm building my racks up. I'm just getting a couple of marines out. It's always a good idea, even if you're not doing seven barracks or anything, just pure rush mode on this guy. And I'm not going to lie, uh, this was not a very, very good seven racks game. Honestly, if he was a better player, I probably should have lost this because I really was not pumping out my marines nearly as fast as I should have been. My macro is really off. Uh, I actually haven't played this game in quite a while. So <laughs> this is pretty decent under the circumstances. But yeah, I do have a guy uh, spotting up this tower here so I can kind of see and you think he's moving right through this area if I am paying attention, which I'm usually not. Uh, so he's just scouting over here. Getting a couple of Zerglings out. Not really aware of this at the time. He's got his Overlord scouting any expansions. I'm trying to do far out, I guess, but I just end up expanding right here because it's convenient. And so, yes, I finally remembered that, oh shit, I should probably actually wall off. Because I always forget to wall off uh, every single time. <laughs> and then I realized, yeah, so I'm just kind of testing here my wall, make sure there's no gaps. That's always a good idea, because if you build, you wall off, and then there's a gap, it's just, it's just completely useless. And he does end up rushing in about a minute or so, and the wall actually, it, it really does help. Uh, even though it may get destroyed sometimes, uh, it's, it's not almost a basis of letting your marines just shoot them from behind here so you know the zerglings can't attack you because it's usually to prevent like zergling rush, zeal out rush, all that kind of stuff so since they're melee units they have to go and attack through these things first so you can just easily gun them down where they have no chance at you on top of that they can just immediately rush through uh, just come right through and just go right after your SCVs which is what you want to protect so it doesn't really matter as much if this kind of stuff just goes down to ruins uh, well it kind of does but you know you, you stand a decent fighting chance while you're holding these guys off right here, so that's a good idea. And obviously I'm really not building as many SCVs as I probably should be. I should actually probably have a whole bunch of more SCVs out right now. I don't have too many minerals, but this guy's really floating a lot of cash. So you can tell already he's not really doing the greatest build, uh, because he's floating a lot of cash. He should probably be making some shit out of that. And at the end I end up doing... I end up uh, floating around a thousand minerals at a time, which is not a good thing to do because you know you always want to be building stuff, especially if you're doing a rush build like this, because you're not saving up for anything. All you're doing is building marines, snap, snap, snap. That's why you want to hotkey these uh, 
barracks right here, so I hockey these first two I build. So you just want to build two at the beginning, just pump out a few guys, and once you, you get like enough eco to support, so you're going to need a good expansion first, you need a lot of SCVs here, and you're going to need a good expansion like down here anywhere uh, to support seven barracks running at once, because otherwise you're not going to pump enough marines out out of all of them, so which just makes it useless. So you need to make sure you can get a good firm eco going first, so you can support seven barracks. So this means that you always have enough to pump at least one guy out of each barracks. So it makes it useful, you know, it, ma it makes it uh, it makes it worthwhile, right? Because if you can only have enough cash at any one time to pump guys out of four or five barracks, what's the use of the other two? There is no use to them, you know, you're not really making any use of them because you're not making enough income. So you want to try and make sure you get a good eco going, and I should have probably actually, you know, expanded uh, by now, even though I haven't really saved up too much cash yet uh, to make an expansion, I should have probably... Ah, and there we go, you know, I'm just going to actually just pump right back on this, actually, just so I can show you guys how this works here. So he actually did just come in Zergling Rush there, I didn't notice that. So see, he just kind of sits out there, so I can see him coming in, so I get my guys ready right around the uh, right around the edges. Second he rushes in, he just gets completely raped, he just decides to get the hell out of there, because he knows he has no chance, because by the time he takes this down... Uh, all these guys will pretty much be dead, so it would have been completely useful, useless for him. You know, obviously me, I always like trolling the chat, so. <laughs> you know, my big, oh no! <laughs> and so also that, also, by putting this up here, I forgot to mention, uh, so since he's like Zerg, right, he can't, uh, he can kind of scout with his overlords, if he ever does really get in there without me noticing, which I yeah, think he does, that's how he gets the Nidus Worm in there, but it also makes it a little bit harder for him to kind of see what build I got going on in here, because right, I, I got my stuff coming right back here, right? So I'm building all my stuff back here, all the way back here, and he cannot get vision from all the way here, right, of what I'm building, so he doesn't know what my build is, unless obviously he comes in scouts, because he's not Terran, so he can't use, uh, he can't use, uh, Orbital Command or anything, right? So if he had Orbital Command, I guess it wouldn't really, uh, if he was playing Terran, it wouldn't really do that, but it's just another kind of little side measure that just kind of gets included in this with walling off and stuff, so it's just something I thought I should just throw out there for you guys. So yes, I did finally get my uh, Command Center going down here, got my little expansion. So I am going to send a couple guys just down there to obviously defend this. Uh, you do want to leave the majority of your men usually up here. And obviously, since I'm going seven racks, I'm not really going for uh, long-term gameplay here. So I'm not going for planning for long-term uh, success. So I don't really need to get like a big firm establishment up here. But usually, you would want to leave most of your guys up here. Most of your like, uh, you want to probably get a couple siege tanks around the edges, a couple turrets and stuff. Uh, maybe some Vikings. You know, keep some stuff up here because you want to defend this main area because this is where all you pretty much all your build is going to take place. This is your main. Uh, area probably with all your supply depots back here uh, your main amount of guys and hold on here's just where I'm floating a thousand bucks so I finally decided to get my seven racks going at this point because I can see I have a firm eco I've made about a thousand I've made about a thousand minerals and so that's more than enough to go and build this I'm still making it back relatively fast I have a lot of SCVs here I've just finished my expansion I'm still sitting my guy idle there you want to try and make sure the second it's done you want to get your guys moving you want to get some more guys pumping out as fast as possible because that would be the most effective measure for getting more minerals and stuff. So obviously, uh, you see I only built one refinery. I just got a couple guys going on there. Uh, except I forgot to mention, I did build the tech lab mostly. So you want to get stim pack for this. Because stim pack is always good in case of an emergency. And combat shield is always quite helpful. You know, get that, you get that extra 10 uh, health on each guy. So that's actually, it doesn't sound like a knot, but that's fairly significant. That's actually about one-fifth their health just added on. So when you think about it in mathematical terms, it's actually a pretty decent amount. That's like 20% more health. So 20% more health is a pretty fairly decent amount, especially just for a simple like uh, upgrade like that. It's like 100 minerals, 100 of gas. It's, it's really worth it. You know, it's the price of two marines and just sending a couple guys over to refinery for a bit. So you got to just get that stim pack. You want to get the combat shields then you're pretty much set and I do build a little bit of bunker down here so you know I can kind of protect these guys because if you just send them over here uh, as so it does not really work out too well they're not very well defended bunkers are actually very effective they actually do add a bit of range yet yeah, so adds plus one range to units inside so it does give you a bit of range so you guys get a bit of extra range that's a bit helpful and obviously you have the bunker so 400 life on this thing you set four guys inside there and even when it gets destroyed you guys are still alive so it's just that they shoot then without and now uh here's the Ninus worm actually i just want to go back a bit hold on just so i can see with the Ninus worm so yeah so obviously he gets the overseer out here i did not even see that 
Uh, I don't know why it's actually, see, it's obviously appearing right there. I probably should have seen it with my SCV sitting right here, so it would have probably come up on my screen. I did see the Nidus Worm, like, when it was way too late. Uh, so I'm actually going to fast forward up here. And, yeah, so now he gets the Nidus Worm started. So, obviously, it does give you a... Or, sorry. Hold on. I'm being a noob at this. Hold on. Just give me a second. Sorry. Uh, let's put that to faster. So, yeah. You do get about 20 seconds or so to get a chance to go and kill this thing before it uh, starts spawning your stuff in. So if you are paying attention, you will see the Nidus Worm. So I did send in my guys, like, when it was just about finished building. I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> so I got my guys over there as fast as possible. So actually, you want to try and... I don't know what I'm doing with my probes here, but you want to actually try and move them out of there. You know, get them out of this place, because you don't want them to be attacked. So I finally actually realized, oh shit, I haven't moved my probes out yet. So I loaded... I think I loaded some into the command center. And then put some over here, but I can't actually remember exactly what I did. I'm not sure. No, I'm, I haven't even moved them yet. Oh, yeah, there we go. So now I'm moving them. <laughs> I only saved about four or so from this area, but I did have a whole bunch sitting idle at my racks. And that is also something you want to avoid doing. Once they are done uh, finishing like your structure or whatever, you want to get them back on mining. But I actually completely forgot to do that. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I just did. And so, yeah, I killed a Nidus Worm. I'm like, oh, you fucker. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and that this is always a good time to counter, right? Uh, so, obviously, I don't know he has all this stuff here. There's not really a lot of Zerglings, but you, you do know that whenever he sends a big attack at you like that, it's always a good time to counterattack. Uh, and the reason for that is because I just saw they sent in a giant amount of army there, or not necessarily, but he sent in a fairly reasonable amount. And on top of that, he's sending in more guys right here. So, as you can see, this bunker is pretty helpful. It does shoot any guys coming over here. And once again, I take forever to move my SCVs out of there. So I did load up my command center. Uh, so now it's full, and I send the remaining couple SCVs out, if I ever do. Nope, not yet. Yeah, yeah. I, n I never even sent these guys out. Uh, just ignore my phone. It's probably some telemarketer. I'll pick it up later. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so the bunker does really help. And so, you know, I did end up sending my guys back out here, and they're getting to work. So this is a great time to counterattack, because, you know, he just sent out all those Zerglings here. Uh, so he actually has, like, no defense right now, actually. So I, I was uh, uh, unsure of this, obviously, you know. I thought he'd probably have a few guys, but I met, like, no resistance at first. Uh, he did get a couple Zerglings out there, not really too much to fight off. Um, but if someone ever sends a giant, like, you know, attack at you like that, and you still have army left, you want to counterattack. Because then... Hopefully, if they don't know, number one, what they're doing, you will have an amazing counterattack. Now, right here, you want to get rid of these Baneling Nests before they even spawn. Because look at the second they spawn. Look when they spawn. Just give it a sec. Because a couple of them survive, and yeah, there goes half my army. Baneling just completely destroy Marines. Like, it's just, it's like Colossi on Marines. It's just complete killer. So you want to, if you see those things, he's trying to spawn them in, obviously. Because he's being a bit smarter about this now. Uh, so he's actually just getting uh, circling in here. It's not spawning more Banelings. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure about how Zerg works and everything. I don't play Zerg very often. Not that amazing with it. Also, you can see I'm floating once again 900 minerals back here, and I should be building stuff at my barracks. Uh, yeah, so there's still a whole bunch of them not building anything, right? I'm just floating all this cash. I should be building more Marines, pumping them out as fast as I can, because I'm pushing right into his base, right? So these guys just died. But I want to have guys there the second they die, so he does not have any chance to go and start rebuilding, right? So these guys take a few seconds to get there. You want to be having more guys. You don't even want your entire army to die off at any point in this stage, right? Because I'm pushing him back so far, right? He's pretty much gone. Like, he, he's, he's a goner at this point, but you want to you enforce that. Make sure he cannot get anywhere. So I was going to pack it up on these guys. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> I'm going all out. So, you know, I did send out my couple of guys here because I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to build. You always want to leave a couple guys back, yes, and just in case he just flanks from the side or something. So, you don't want to get end up going into a base race because of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and right here he just leaves the game. And, well, I pretty much just quit now as well. And this is the end of this because, you know, he left the game. What else is there for me to do? And you can see I have pretty much destroyed him overall. Uh, so it was pretty much a good idea for him to leave the game, obviously he's not being a very good uh, sport about it, he didn't say GG, I would say GG, GG, okay. uh, but yeah, so there's not really anything left uh, on this screen here, you know, he has no units left, I'm already destroying this hatchery, but what I would have gone for uh, is the Baneling Nest right here, this is the first thing you want to get rid of, because that means he cannot build any more Baneling, so if he did decide to stay in the game, and maybe he had like another base somewhere, you know, that I didn't know about, 
you know, the first thing you want to do is get rid of this Baneling Ass. You want to get rid of all the important stuff first. Make sure he cannot build that up. Uh, so you can worry about the drones in his eco later. You want you want to grab this Baneling Ass too, especially if you're outnumbered by like Zerglings and stuff, and you know you can't fight them off, and something like that. And you just wanna, it's it's not a killer attack. And what I mean by that is that. You know, you, you don't have enough force there to completely wipe out his army and then wipe out his buildings. You only have enough to do one or the other, kind of. You want to go after this. You want to take this out, and then if you have time, you, some guys left, and you can just try and finish off kind of whatever Zerglings you can take. Because if there's a lot of Zerglings out there, you're not going to be able to take them all with at least this small army right here. So you want to take this out. Uh, so you might want to take out the roaches too. The roaches are pretty effective against uh, marines as well. So he was getting into the kind of the good build, and then maybe like this Nidus network at last. Uh, the zerglings aren't nearly as big of a threat, so you want to kind of leave that spawning pool for last. But the Nidus network really pissed me off, so I would take that out because you know I'm probably not spotting this guy at all over here. Uh, and then you know maybe go up to your spawning pool. Obviously take out his hatcheries at the last thing. Now the reason I took out his hatchery right here because you always want to grab expansions first. You never run right past them. So even if he, I was doing expansion checking, I probably would have been doing that later if this game lasted longer. You want to preferably be done seven racks by about 15 minutes. You want to end the game by around then. It lasted a bit longer, like I said, because my build was pretty slow. And obviously he was a better player. He most likely would have pretty much killed me off. Uh, but yeah, you want to check for expansions. You always want to kill off expansions. Uh, that just completely destroys their eco because expansions are very, very hard to defend. Because if you're sending a full army out and you're sending my little force like these guys out here, it's not going to do anything versus expansion. Like, uh, their full army. So this this is zero defense at all. Uh, the only reason I just kind of sent them down there just to hold them off until I can maybe send some more guys from up here down there. So that's pretty much a hold off force. But if my expansion's out here for say, I'm not gonna get guys out nearly fast enough. They'll they'll be done and gone. But anyways, yeah. So this would be an expansion down here, or sorry, sorry here that I took out. You can see I left the extractors because there's no need to take them out. That like his hatchery here is gone. These do not pose a threat to. Uh, him doing well on eco or anything at the moment, so these are low priority. So there is no need to take them out. Same with the larvae. Yeah, he can go and spawn a couple of new guys. Why the fuck do I care? You know, he he can he can start building up his uh fucking uh hatchery all over again. Well, it's gonna take a while. That's that's the intent, right? So they're they're not the biggest threats. So you always want to leave these extractors for last. These are like if you're wiping out an expansion, you've killed everything else, then you can take out like the refineries and stuff. Because those are really last priority. They're just kind of there just for the fun of it, really. Honestly, that's that's what I do sometimes. I just run around killing shit. Because <laughs> it's like better to do. Anyways, yeah, so sorry about that long-ass commentary that kind of uh, went past the game time there. I was just trying to explain stuff to you guys uh, at the end there. You know, um, if any of you are still watching, you still want to know, right? So just for those... Uh, kind of extra things that some people might be wondering about and might want to know because they watch this commentary I'm not sure or or you just want to see the gameplay. I guess you probably left like five minutes ago But yeah, so you know if if you were just wondering yeah, I guess I put that in there Sorry about the extremely long commentary I hope you enjoyed this if you even managed to make it this far and you know I hope you end up subscribing or sorry, not end up subscribing, but you know, if you want to see some more content uh, from, I'm going to be uploading this on TGN Strategy, so yes, if you want to see some more TGN Strategy content from some of our amazing other directors here, uh, I know some other people post some much better StarCraft 2 than me, because I'm, I'm kind of a noob at this game. I'm thinking of a few more strategy games you know, out there, so I can kind of post a little bit better content I haven't posted here in a while, I'm sorry about that. Or if you're watching this somewhere else, yeah, you can feel free to subscribe for more content, I guess. Sorry. Uh, have a nice day.